So at this time last year, September 24th, 2015, I was monitoring the computer models as we're hinting on a massive hurricane that could, could form and potentially head towards the United States eventually. So it formed on September 28th, and even four days before the storm, um, yeah, I was, mo and, he, and here's a funny thing, Joaquin developed from a non-tropical lull to become a tropical depression. Not like, non-tropical means it did not develop in the tropics, like, you know, how you have hurricanes moving off the west coast of Africa, you know, that, you know, or you could have some upper level lows in the tropics that are tropical, like, sort of. This one developed from a cold core storm, as in it came off the United States a week. About At this time, there was a storm that was coming off the Carolina coast. Nobody thought much of about it, but the models were talking about it. And they were, people were saying, wow, this storm has some potential, though, because the water down here were, was way above normal, mid to upper 80s. The waters were primed for tropical development, considering there's been no tropical systems that year that went over there before Joaquin, so the waters were just primed all that untapped heat. And so Joaquin, or what later became Joaquin, the, that upper level low, you know, upper level lows usually have a lot of wind shear, but because a surface low formed inside the upper level low, there was nothing to shear that low pressure center apart. So thunderstorms start forming, you know, under the upper level low, the mid level low, and the surface low. And started drifting over warmer and warm, more waters. Initially, where it was located, the waters were pretty cool, not very conducive for tropical development. But then it moved further and further south and westward and meandered, moving briefly northwest and southwest. And as it meandered and moved south, it went into very warm waters, especially near the Turks and Caicos. And, you know, it developed, quickly went from tropical depression, tropical storm to hurricane. And by September 30th, you know, it became a Category 3 hurricane. Um, it became a hurricane just two days after it became designated as a tropical pressure. So it formed like in the blink of an eye. It went from nothing to being a major storm. Here's the meteorological history right here. Here's an extra, see it's extra tropical. It's probably an invest now. Tropical, extra tropical depression. No. It's tropical depression, tropical storm. Category 1, Category 2, let me see, it's a tropical depression, tropical storm right here, but it formed here and it drifted like that, so see it moved, moved northwest, then moved southwest, southwest, moving southwest, tropical storm, Category 1, Category 3, well, actually, Category 1, Category 2, Category 4, it went right from Category 2 to Category 4 in one advisory. Category 3, Category 4, Category 3, Category 2, Category 1. See, there's no, there's no, see, that's a Category 3, that's Category 2. Here, it went right from Cat 1 to Cat 3 in one advisory. And I'll tell you. Um... See, high sea surface temperatures and decreasing wind shear aid is strengthening in early September 30th, storm achieved hurricane status. Rapid intensification ensued thereafter with an, with an eye developing with a symmetric, dense central overcast. Okay, data reconnaissance indicated Joaquin reached Category 3 status on the Saffir Simpson scale by 0300 UTC on October 1st. Um, around 1500 UTC, about 12 hours later. They indicate a wind of 125 miles an hour, and the system further intensified to category four with maximum sustained winds of 130 miles an hour. So I contracted from 41 miles to 27 miles in diameter. At that time, Joaquin was located 50 miles northwest of Crooked Island. The storm central pressure was bottomed out 931. So then October 2nd, it underwent an Iowa replacement cycle and possessed a second larger eye while the inner eye wall collapsed. Began that morning. So it week so the and the hurricane passed over Rum K in Salvador Island as a middle category four hurricane and strong category three respectively. So it kind of weakened to under category four status briefly and then again we reattained it. Um 
An amplifying trough over the southeast United States enhanced a southwesterly flow over Joaquin on the weather and prompted the hurricane to accelerate northeast away from the Bahamas. Throughout the day, Joaquin Storm Center became increasingly defined and in reintensification re ensued. Aircraft reconnaissance found a considerably stronger system that afternoon. Flight level winds of 166 miles per hour. It is estimated that Joaquin attained surface winds of 155 miles an hour. I ain't cat away for hurricane. Actually, literally one mile away from one mile per hour away from being a cat five. This made Joaquin the strongest Atlantic of non-tropical origin in the satellite satellite era. <laughs> the strongest. This made Joaquin the strongest Atlantic hurricane of non-tropical origin in the satellite era. You know, they can't say in record history, but in the satellite era, yes. And I was actually pointing that out when I, the moment I saw the 155, I said, this is the strongest hurricane in recorded history. That's what I said. That did not come from the tropics. Hmm. Wow. So, so it turns out what I noticed is, was pretty accurate. So, you know how we know it came from non-tropics? Because it came off the Carolina coast. It was, it came off the East Coast. Had it not been for that, you know, that upper level low that went off the Carolina coast, what came wouldn't even existed. So in a way, this is actually not a, maybe this is just a very bad storm. I mean, since it did not develop from the tropics, it, I mean, it makes my head spin. Anyway, it became tropical. That's all we need to know. Speaking of, and the reason I'm talking about the tropics. Okay, now it's time to get serious again. Now, in a bad way, serious. Like, this could be worse than Joaquin was for the Bahamas to the United States. So this storm could be worse to the United States than, worse than Joaquin was to the Bahamas. So here's what I'm talking about. This system right here looks like it's nothing. And this is going to be a Cape Verde type storm that's going to affect us now. Fully tropical storm. All these storms here, fully tropical, fully tropical, fully tropical. And about the same time Joaquin formed September 28th, we could be talking about tropical storm of tropical origins entering the Caribbean. And the GFS is hinting on a major storm then affecting Jamaica, Cuba, Yucatan, it's gonna, and then Florida and then the East Coast. Uh, from what I saw with the winds, I'm going to go down to 500 millibars, up to 500 millibars, I mean. They are showing a tropical storm coming in. It should be a minimal hurricane at this point in time. Should be a category two at this point, a category one at this point in time. Category two, maybe three at this point in time. Showing two knots, but now category four. Category three, maybe a four, maybe a five, because 128 knots at 500 millibars usually means the wind will be over 150 miles an hour ground level. So I'm going to show you that this this 18Z run, and at this time in time, winds are 155 miles an hour, and the strongest winds I'm able to find are 100 and. 20 knots. 100. Let's go. Uh, let's see, hour 134, hour 348. Let's go to the southeast. Actually, Southern Great Plains, I believe. We should go. To, okay, Southern Great Plains. Hour 348. So this is where 124 knots. Yet yeah, I was observing 128 knots. And let's see. What they're showing at the surface. 131 knots. So the strongest wind about right here, you know, right for a quadrant, which is you know normal. 24 knots. So four more miles an hour. So 140 to 120. Four miles an hour difference. That height would usually mean, let's see, 10 miles an hour. So, wow. Category 5. So, yes, the GFS is forecasting Category 5 in the Caribbean. 
And this model, you know, shows a landfall of a monster storm. Showing a strong category four. This model is showing a category two, category three storm. Let's look at air surface pressure. Can't even see. Nine hundred and nine hundred eighteen millibars. Can't even see. It's so fine. About nine nine hundred and what? So tight. I can't even see. Nine hundred eighteen. Yeah, nine hundred eighteen millibars. It says. Yeah, that's nine. That's a nine one eight right there. We could tell if it's below. If it's below uh, 920 millibars, is to look at 990. Yeah, this is definitely going to be in the 910s. 20, 90, 90. One twenty. That's a thirty. Yeah, that's a that's definitely be in the nine hundred tens. Yeah, that's. You know, you know that's in the nine tens because I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna, we're gonna go to southeast now, and we're gonna ninety. 60, 30. 912. There, right there. 912. I clearly see that 912 right there. I don't know if you can see that, but that's a 912 millibar storm. Definitely category 4 or 5. 916 millibars. Landfall at 932 millibars, 900, yeah, yeah, bad, wow, 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 918, 912, this is our 348, 360, 372, 384. So yeah, we're, so by using that data, I could tell you what the storm is going to be in the Caribbean you know, by using the 500 millibar wind speed rule, as I call it. Um... So showing category five right at this point in time, right here. So this is a probably strong cat four, maybe cat five. One twenty six knots, yeah, category five at this point. Now we're two twenty five, a very compact category four strength storm. And then look what's gonna happen? It's gonna become a bigger storm. See. Compact, very compact, but very strong storm. Probably category four, maybe category five, according to this GFS run in the Caribbean. Very compact storm, but very powerful. Passing just south of Jamaica, just over south of Jamaica, then becoming a bigger storm. See how the wind field increases, but the wind speeds decrease. So a increasing coverage storm. And so this is right at landfall after landfall. So it's storm is being absorbed basically so it's basically going to strengthen I will replacement cycle become bigger and then it will be the interaction of the Yucatan which will really weaken it but then it will really strengthen the Gulf and I'm gonna yeah so not good well I have to go thank you for watching but before I go I just need to tell you that there's been all sorts of range of models today this is a 12 Z run what they're showing Showing the storm go into the Yucatan and then, you know, just sitting there and then basically disintegrating after hitting the Yucatan. So surface pressure. So here, here's Matthew. And by the way, this storm will be called Matthew. So massive Category 4, Category 5 hurricane. Going into the Yucatan. Weakening in the Yucatan. And then, you know, weak the remnant and low of this storm will drift into Texas, according to the 12Z run, which happened earlier today. The 6Z run almost mimics the current run, six, you know, which occurred almost 24, you know, three runs ago. Shows 
so the six Z one, which was you know the other run. So this is the six Z one. Almost similar track, however, the outcome is a little different. You know, it stalls upon landfall and just meanders, and then 